Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we are exploring the idea of a full-scale manned mission to the moon using three separate launches. In total here today we have two Falcon Heavies to send up two separate segments of our moon lander. And then we'll have a final Falcon 9 launch to send up our crew. Now, a special treat today, everyone, because this footage has been captured and edited, not by me, but by another very talented YouTuber, Nessus, who I have linked here in the top right. And also, I'll be adding that to the end screen towards the end of the video as well. Now, the original version of this video is fully decked out with some fantastic music, so please do check that version out as well. It's amazing. And also subscribe to his channel to see some pretty awesome upcoming content with SpaceX's BFR. So kicking off the very first launch of this mission, which actually forms our moon lander as well as our third stage. The mass of the payload for this launch is 25 ton, which the Falcon Heavy can very easily punch up to orbit while also recovering both side boosters and also the central core booster out on the drone ship in the ocean. All of this footage, by the way, is captured using Kerbal Space Program modded with all of the real solar system and realism overhaul mods. And this essentially makes the game behave much more realistic than the stock game. And it does allow us to simulate quite accurately a full-scale Earth launch profile as opposed to the stock game, which is much simpler. Just coming up here to engine cutoff for the side boosters, decoupling those, and they will head back to the launch pad because we have enough fuel to spare to get them all the way back. This is only a fairly small payload compared to the full capability of the Falcon Heavy. Now, just as in my previous videos, Nessus here has used the Kerbal Operating System mod to fully program the behavior of the launch profile and the booster landings, which just boggles my mind still that we've been able to do this with Kerbal Operating System. Just amazing stuff to be playing around with. Now for those of you that are really keen on checking out all of the Delta V stats, if you're interested in that sort of thing, you can find them down here in the bottom right of the screen in a lot of these cutscenes. So you can sort of get a good idea on just how much fuel was left coming into land and you can see how accurately he's got this working. First of all, switching all three engines on to reduce most of that velocity, finally then switching to the single engine burn just prior to touching down on the launch pad. Beautifully synchronized, there we go, that is incredible. Meanwhile, of course, our central core booster finalized its burn and uh, it's going to come down on the drone ship leaving our stage two to continue on its merry way there. We are now out of the atmosphere so we can ditch these fairings to ensure that our launch profile is as efficient as possible. And switching back to our core booster now, we have a three engine retrograde burn there to reduce most of our horizontal velocity and using the grid fins very expertly there to control our descent down onto the drone ship. Again, single engine burn just to touch down and there we go, a beautiful cinematic touchdown there on the drone ship, making it look very routine there. And while this is happening, of course, our stage two is finally circularized and the transfer stage here filled with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen is powered by the RL-10B engine with an extending nozzle here, basically just to allow it to fit inside the Falcon Heavy fairing. So this is basically similar technology to what's already being used today on Delta IV upper stages. So it's a great choice for a transfer stage. The efficiency of that engine is pretty amazing with a huge specific impulse up over 450 seconds. So pretty amazing stuff. This gets our little lunar lander here all the way up and we just need to circularize now using its engines, which is generally around an 800 meter per second burn, give or take. So the lander here is going to wait for our crew in a low lunar orbit. So the next component of our vessel here is the cryogenic transfer stage. 30 ton is the mass of this payload, so uh, quite a bit heavier than our last launch. This is going to require that our side boosters land out on the drone ship as well as our core landing out on the drone ship. 
Now because the two side boosters in this case are heading to land on the two drone ships rather than boosting all the way back to land, they have quite a bit more delta V to get the central core to a much higher velocity before decoupling and then they can just simply come down land on the drone ship. I say simply, it's not simple, it's anything but simple. I can tell you that from experience myself. There we go, touching down there with both vessels right in the center, perfect landings. And our central core cutting off there at 3,700 meters per second. That of course means that the central core needs to wipe off a lot of that velocity prior to re-entering into the atmosphere, otherwise it's just going to burn up and damage all of those engines. So you can see a very hot re-entry there at over 1,000 meters per second, again using those grid fins perfectly to touch down, single engine burn, and there we go, right in the center of the drone ship again. Now, seeing as this payload is pretty much just a massive fuel tank powered with another one of the RL-10B engines, it's going to have enough mass to push our next payload all the way up to the moon to meet up with our lunar lander. Enter, of course, our three pseudo-humans, our three green kerbals there who are jumping into our command module on top of a Falcon 9 rocket. A 15-ton payload this is here, launching those kerbals there up to dock with our transfer stage. This will, of course, be the very first manned mission to the moon since Apollo 17 back in 1972. I don't know about everybody else, but I am super excited to see another moon landing very soon. We have our fingers crossed for SpaceX and other providers as well. Punching through the atmosphere there at over 500 meters per second, switching to the single engine burn, just a touch down there on the landing pad, and there we go, the trifecta. Now, a little information about the command and transfer modules. After launch, the transfer stage puts itself into an eccentric orbit and the command module is launched just after the transfer stage reaches orbit. So the idea here is that the command module can rendezvous after only one orbit of the transfer stage. Less than two hours after the transfer stage is launched, it's docked to the command module. Now, with current precautions and uh, routines, this may seem a little unrealistic, but it should certainly be possible. As long as the transfer stage is used prior to any significant hydrogen boil off and loss of delta V, then everything there should work out fine. The transfer stage alone here actually has a delta V of over 6,000 meters per second, and uh, once the command module is docked, this is then of course reduced significantly to just over 3,000 meters per second, which is enough to push the crewed command module all the way up to the moon. This command module is powered with hypergolic fuels and it's running an AJ-10 engine there at the back, the historic AJ-10. It's only fueled to around 70% of its fuel capacity because any more than that, it wouldn't have allowed the Falcon 9 to come back to the landing site to land. You probably spotted a moment ago there refilling that stage with some of the fuel from the transfer stage. So just docking our command module there to the moon lander so that our little kerbals, our pseudo-humans can hop over into the moon lander. Two of our kerbals are coming down onto the moon, one staying behind, just as in the Apollo missions so many years ago. We have Valentina and Bob Kerman here today doing the very risky part of this mission, actually coming down to land. There is only a very, very small fuel margin here. This needs to be spot on. Of course, just like those Apollo missions, the idea here is for the top portion of this vessel to decouple, leaving the bottom half on the moon's surface. That's why it's so important to land with the fuel margin we have here. Um, it's not capable of transferring fuel between the two stages, and there we go, touched down there perfectly with only 140 meters per second of delta V left, so hardly anything. And uh, there we go, touching down for the first time on the surface for so many years. A little celebration there from Bob Kerman, and joined there by Valentina Kerman to do the ceremonial planting of the flag. There we go, beautiful there. So we can now fold up our letter, our kerbals are loaded aboard into the top portion of our vessel here, and we can just sit back and imagine what it would be like sitting on the moon, looking up at the earth there in the sky. Actually, uh, probably pretty fearful that this next engine isn't going to fire, because if this doesn't fire, they are not leaving. <laughs> so luckily in this case, our single engine there takes off, we separate from the bottom portion of our vessel. And there is enough fuel in this stage to just get us to a low lunar orbit. 
Now, unlike the stock Kerbal Space Program game, it is really important with these Realism Overhaul mod installs that you've got adequate uh, reaction control systems for attitude and translation control, otherwise you just cannot rotate your vessel, especially when there is no active engine uh, with gimbal turned on. So extremely important for docking scenes like this, where we need to make sure that those docking points are very perfectly aligned to dock just like that. So we now have just enough fuel in our command service module stage here to eject from the moon sphere of influence in a retrograde direction. That means opposite to the direction that the moon is orbiting in. That's going to push us in an escape trajectory that's going to allow us to return back to the Earth, hit the atmosphere, and actually begin our re-entry. It's very important, of course, that we have an adequate heat shield because we are re-entering here at around 11 kilometers per second returning from the moon. So as we punch down through the atmosphere, we finally come to our landing scene where we have got installed here a few Super Draco engines just to touch down on the surface of the Earth there without a parachute. And there we go, mission complete. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do take a second, hit that like button. All of your support is awesome. Please do head over and watch the music version of this same video. It is awesome. It is linked here in the bottom left. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you by some sad little robot. Thanks for watching, and we will see you all in the next video.